Hey there, Sandra here from Create in Spain, and you're probably wondering what on earth this is. Well, it happens to be my solution to a battery holder. This is cut from a relatively thin plastic, so it is foldable, but it's 500 microns, which means that it's a bit stiffer than perhaps stencil material, something like that. Fold this so that the two circles in the middle actually meet. And this side here is the bit which is going to be stuck inside the card. And what I'm going to be doing is using a single light bulb which is taken from a battery string of LED lights, Christmas lights. And what you need to do is take an emery board and you need to really make sure that the copper wire is exposed the last two centimeters approximately or an inch and a bit if you're american now the reason you do that is because the coating is on there so that under normal circumstances when you're using the led lights in the usual way the lights don't short themselves out by crossing when they're on but for this particular purpose i need to have those wires exposed so the coating which is on them needs to come off now you generally can see that it looks coppery colored if it's off properly when you have lights like this they can be cut off of the string now you can cut off a single light you can cut off five six seven lights if you want keep them in a string and they'll be fine. All I have here though is the light bulb and the wire. I don't have a battery on it. So here's the battery. Now this is nice and thin. This is a CR2016 battery. And if you have a 2032, it's gonna be chunkier than this. But the 2016 is very, very good. And I need to work out which way round my wires are positive and negative. Now on a battery you have a plus sign, that's the positive, and the other side is the negative. If I turn this around and put the battery in between the two wires, it lights up. It's not a very bright bulb. My battery is probably quite old by now. It's one that I use habitually for testing my circuits. So if I put this together with the battery in the middle, what I want to do is to mark which one is the positive one and I will just fold back a tiny little bit of the wire to do that so I know now that's the positive and that's the negative and it means when I do put my battery on this I'll get it around the right way hopefully. I have here some very thin double-sided foam tape. It's great because it's very thin. It is also great because it's extremely sticky. That is the reason why I am not cutting this on my cutting machine, even though it would cut through it. It's so sticky, it's just gonna stay on the blade and it's gonna be a mess. So I definitely don't wanna do that. And I'm just going to cut off a small piece that is smaller than my battery. And I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to cut another piece of this tape and I'm going to put it on this side here. And this little shape here is simply so you can grab hold of it. It's for no other purpose. And get something reasonably sharp just to poke a hole through the foam. So now I'm going to remove the protective film on that one. Put it to one side at the moment. And I'm going to put my plus side wire, whoops, straighten that leg out so I can get it through the hole. I'm going to put it through the hole from the back. Now when you strip the wire down, you want to strip both sides down equally because you'll be going by the colour of the wire to work out how much wire to put through. So if it's copper coloured, it needs to be on that side. If it's not copper coloured, it needs to be on the other side. All right, so we just twist this around a little bit and there it is on top of the foam. Now on this one here, you simply put the wire through like so. Again, making sure to put all the copper wire 
copper coloured wire through and we curl that around on there. Oh, I forgot to take the little um, backing off so that comes off. Okay, make sure it's on the foam and not outside of it. If you need to, if you find this too fiddly, you can always do it with a pair of tweezers. I already know that that's the positive side, so that side has to go down, so it's the other side that gets to stick on there, like so. Now, as I said, I found this tape to be really good because it is extremely sticky. The subtle tape that I was using previously when I tried it with the normal double side tape didn't keep it in close enough contact. You want that really close contact so that the battery and the wires contact and it switches on properly. So now if I close that, I will get my light on. And then I have my circuit closed, the light is on. But all I have to do is to open it up and the light is switched off. So when you send this to someone, all you need to do is put in a little piece of acetate. Don't put cardboard in because it's going to stick to that. Put in a small strip of acetate or another piece of that particular plastic. I've got some here that I can cut. And what I would do is I would simply write on it, remove and fold down battery. Now that will go under there and then nothing is going to contact at all. But when it's in the post, you can just leave it like that inside in the card. And then when someone gets it, they remove that and they close it. So how does it go in the card itself? Well, quite easily. As I said, you need to have some double side tape on here. So I can take some normal double side tape I'm not going to use the foam tape simply because I don't want it to be any thicker than it has to be. So I'm just going to trim that down. Now let's pretend this is my card. All right. What I would do is take that backing tape off. Come on, backing tape. Come on. It's the worst thing about double side tape. Trying to get the backing tape off. There we go. So I would have it closed up and I would put my light through here and I would just stick it down on the inside. Right, now on the front side of this you have your decorative panel with your cutouts, with the hole for your lights, etc, etc. So when you're making a card you do your decor panel first with the hole where you want your lights to be you mark where you want the holes to be on here and you place this battery pack accordingly so that your one light or your string of lights can go wherever they need to be. So when someone gets the card, they remove that, they put that down and the card is lit up. But when they want to switch it off, they can simply open it up and that's it, the card is switched off. That is probably about the easiest way I can think of to do an LED card switch. Now, if you want to do switches where someone just presses a button on the front and it lights up and then it goes off as soon as the pressure is released, that's another story altogether. This is one that you can literally switch on and off so that it's continuously on or continuously off as you need it. I have done plenty of different LED cards and I've shown you many different ways of doing a switch system if that is what you want to do. But if you want something that is extremely easy and has no wiring to do, absolutely nothing, no circuits to draw, this is going to be the easiest way of doing it. Now I've chosen to do it in plastic. I think it will stand up to more use. I just think that this is probably neater, it's more professional looking, and if you want to, you could actually do a decorative sticker for the front of it. And also, if someone wants to keep the card, 
they can change out the battery without any difficulty at all. Just peel it off and put another battery on. I don't think it gets much easier than that, does it? So there we are. That's my version of a battery holder that you can make yourself. Thanks for watching. Please give me a like if you enjoyed it and I will see you again soon. Take care now.